All right, so welcome back to your physics teacher with me, Mr. Fernando. And today we're going to be solving an easy question for conservation of energy. So let's read the question together. We have a 59 kilogram snowboarder and they descend a 1.3 kilometer ski hill from the top of a mountain to the base. The slope is at an angle of 14 degrees to the horizontal. Determine the snowboarder's gravitational potential energy relative to the mountain base when he is at the top and the final velocity at the base. So this is a conservation of energy question. So as I've been telling you again and again, the best thing to do right away is to try to draw a diagram so we can visualize it better. So we have a ski hill and the length of this ski hill is 1.3 kilometers. So we want to put that in as the length. 1.3 kilometers. Now there's a snowboarder. Now I really love snowboarding. You know, I used to do it in my younger days. Now I'm a bit too old for it. But I really enjoyed it when I was younger. The mass of this snowboarder is going to be 59 kilograms. And they also give us another piece of information, right? They're telling us that the slope of this ski hill is 14 degrees to the horizontal. So horizontal, and here we have a degree of, let's call it theta, right? They don't tell us, but it's common to call it theta, 14 degrees. Now, what they're asking us to find is to determine the potential energy at the top of the mountain. So let's try to see what they're trying to find from us. E, G, equals to unknown at the top. So that's what we want to find out. And the second part to this question, they're also asking us to find the final velocity at the base. So V final at the base. All right. Uh, that means it's a good idea to recognize our initial conditions, our final conditions. So initially our snowboard is at the top, they descend down the ski hill and then at the bottom, we want to find out what the velocity is. Now, we need to make a couple of assumptions. The first thing, we want to assume that it's isolated. So we want to assume an isolated system. The reason we want to do this is then we can apply the law of conservation of energy. So we can therefore say that all the energy in the system is conserved and the only thing that can happen to the energy is it can switch forms from one form into another form. So it's always good to consider your system. The second thing we want to assume is because they didn't tell us anything about friction here, we can assume that in snow, if you experience snow, we can assume to be almost frictionless surface. So assume frictionless. Okay. Once we've done these two assumptions, then we need to do our zero potential for gravitation potential energy. A strategy I mentioned before in my previous video, which you might want to check out, is you always want to consider the lowest point achieved to be our zero potential. So in this case, at the very bottom of the base, we're going to find that to be our zero potential line. So EG equals to zero at the bottom. That's going to be our zero potential line. All right, then with all conservation of energy type questions, there is no equation. The only thing that we know is that all the energy that it has initially the system is going to equal to all the energy that it has at the end. One way we can write that is E initial equals to E final. Well, because it is a frictionless case, we can go even further than that. We can say E mechanical energy equals to the final mechanical energy. And then we just need to play the game of identifying what are the different forms of energy. Well, in this case, the snowboarder descends, <clears throat> so they're going to start at rest. So the only form of energy we have to consider usually is always 
potential energy and kinetic energy. Same thing with the final conditions. And then we're going to try to specify to our specific question. So because it starts from rest, we can say that the initial kinetic energy is zero. And because we define our zero potential to be at the bottom, our potential energy at the bottom is also zero. So this is a very easy question where all the potential energy at the top is going to equal to all the kinetic energy at the bottom. Let's rewrite that. EG initial equals to EK final. And then we can just recall the formulas from before where we can calculate the potential energy as MGH initial and the formula for kinetic energy is a half MV final square. So that's the main formula that we're going to be working with from conservation of energy considerations. But at this point, you already forgot the question, right? What they were even asking us. Good thing we drew the diagram. They're asking us to calculate the potential energy at the top, and they're asking us to calculate the final velocity at the base. Okay, so let's try to do one thing at a time. Let's calculate the potential energy at the top. So the formula, as we already said, is just going to be MGH initial. The mass we're given, the mass is 59 kilograms. And the height, oh, we're not given the height. Hmm. So that's probably what we need to solve for in this question, right? Uh, the only thing that we were given is the slope of this ski hill, and we were given the angle of inclination. Turns out we can use some trigonometry. All right, height, I'm gonna come back for you. Oh, but G, I know G, let me split that in. 9.8. Okay. Okay, height, I'm gonna come back for you. But first, let's do some trigonometry. So I'm gonna draw a simple triangle, and it's gonna be a right angle triangle, where this is gonna be 1.3 kilometers, and the angle is 14 degrees. Because the formula for potential energy does not care about the path, it doesn't care if you run in a on an incline or if you're on a curvy, it does not depend on that. The only thing that potential energy cares about is the change in the object's height. So although they give you the slant, the only thing that we're really interested in is the height difference. So H. I uh, check back one of my other videos where I explain this in more detail. So just click. Okay. But we already studied that from before, and now we just have to apply simple trigonometry for right angle triangles. We have hypotenuse, we, we're looking for the opposite side, so in this case we can use sine ratio from Sokatoa. So sine of 14 degrees, so it's opposite over hypotenuse. And isolating for the height, so I can multiply both sides by 1.3. So my height will be 1.3 kilometers times sine 14. Okay, let's calculate what that is with the calculator and leave a comment if you're enjoying the lesson so far or if I get this wrong, so I get a bit nervous something. 1.3 sine 14. Wow, see I told you. So the height, 0.314 kilometers. But I kept on writing the units of kilometers. If you wanted a much earlier stage, you just change it to meters because that's the SI unit. That's also a very good idea. So we can rewrite this in terms of meters by multiplying by 1,000. So we get 314 meters for the height because potential energy does not care about the path taken. It only cares about the change in height. That's why we found the H. 
So the H, we can plug it back into our equation from before to find the potential energy at the top. 3, 14 meters. Once again, I get nervous putting to the calculator, so let's see. 59, 9.8, 3.14, gives us, wow, this is a lot of joules. 1.81554 joules. Awesome. Now the question will be finished there, but technically the question asks us for one more piece of information. They wanted to find out the final velocity at the base. And we already found from energy conservation the formula that we need to use. So we just have to use this formula to isolate for our unknown, V final, which was the velocity at the base. Uh, so what was my formula? All the potential energy at the top, so MGH initial, was equal to all my kinetic energy at the bottom, a half MV final square. You have two choices here. Since you already know what the potential energy is, you can put in this number into here and isolate for V final. But we want to play with algebra a little bit. She's kind of fun. So in this case, let's do algebra. Notice that in this equation, we have mass on both sides. So we can divide mass on both sides, hence it cancels out. GH initial equals to a half V final square. Again, don't lose sight of your target. We were trying to find the final velocity. In order to do that, we need to get rid of the coefficient of one over two. How do we do that? We're going to multiply both sides by two. So two GH initial equals to V final square. And then to isolate for V final, we're going to take the square root, because of the square here, on both sides. V final equals to the square root of 2GH initial. So let's put this into the calculator. 2 times 9.8 times 314 square root. Wow, I, I think that is quite fast. Uh, I think maybe good luck staying alive. I'm not so sure that this was a correct number, so please leave a comment if it's not correct. It seems quite high. But uh, that's why snowboarding is extreme. And uh, if you want to know an interesting fact, I actually broke my bone snowboarding, but you should stay safe. Make sure you get proper training before you try something crazy, okay? So stay tuned, I'm going to show you more advanced questions and that way you're going to advance your learning, speeding up your learning with me, okay? Bye-bye.